Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tirpol in Focus Live with Paul Magiaka from Tirpol Base. Anyways, there's a quite a problem with dear Paul base here. The faucet is too noisy that coming from the restroom. And I do apologize for some sort of technical issues within this space. And of course, I would like to, you know, yesterday it has been a fulfilling experience to share with some mapping 101 tips with regards to the, you know, ID editor and JOSM editor that has been used by Durkod himself. And right here, don't forget to turn it into Durkod in Focus, but live session rather, on a new schedule, 1800 hours, 6 p.m. Philippine Standard Time, and if you're in the universal time coordinates, it's at 10. And for the New York audiences, it's at 6 Eastern Daylight Time. So please take note of those diff time differences in order to avoid some sort of confusion. If you're in Japan, this program will start at 1900 or 7 p.m. Japan Standard Time. And if you're in Guam or Saipan or Tinian, then this program will start at 2000 hours, 8 p.m. Chamorro Standard Time. So please check with your local time zones for this programming. Previously, the vision mission statement has been disclosed and of course, the expected publication of the vision mission and core values will be Tomorrow evening, right after the feast, SM Dasmania's online session, which is also we started at 1800 hours, 6 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. Don't forget that there would be some sort of community updates in your locality. So please make sure to check with your respective feast FB pages in your local area. Right here from Dear Paul Base in Dasmania City. This is your Dear Paul speaking. And we're going to have this episode on safety tips during the transition phase to the no, new normal. And it's the queuing that we have to execute the new normal, which is meant to be like a physical distancing of a certain meter or 1.5 or 2 meters. And of course, don't forget 
not to follow anyone too close. But not always in this case for the pre-COVID-19 pandemic disaster way back earlier than March 2020 were in. You know, several people got confused whether if I would line it up on the queuing, particularly in the fast food chains. I'll not mention any brands right here. But anyways, the queuing has to be smooth, smooth flow of queuing traffic, but not always in this case. You know what? <laughs> There's an air and people right there blocking the corridor, whereas there must have a space designated for the corridor way. And you know what? Believe it or not, while I'm queuing for the Bills payment all over Walter Marta Swainas. Heading in for the Bayad Center. I have to stop before the corridor line. And unfortunately, the other side is blocking the queue, the corridor way which is making it very harder for maintenance crews to make a turn around instead of a straight line. That's no good for any reason. Even with the absence of the lane markings, you shouldn't block the corridor way in any manner that would impede other maintenance crew and emergency traffic just in case, you know, med somebody's having a medical emergency that needs to use the emergency exit area. And most of the people falling in a dual line have listened to some of my warnings already not to block the corridor way, but this would add confusion for some people right there. They are like, what are these guys doing? Why they are not moving forward? Well, you got a point. Say if you're going to drive any motor vehicle, waiting for the signal light to change to the green, you shouldn't block the yellow box for any reason. Also with the pedestrian crossing and the bicycle box. Same thing as the queuing that you have to follow immediately. Imagine this in the immigration counters of every airports and seaports. There's a stop line, which is also a red line that you shouldn't follow too close to another people right there, especially for privacy and security reasons. 
And if you get caught following too close, you might be subjected to investigation by the police and even prosecution to the full extent of the law. And of course, if I remember this one, queuing at a certain fast food chain in Kaiser Mother's City, And as far as I know, it's too crowded. There's no space already for the corridor line. So I have to give some sort of space. Thankfully, One of the one of my friend also on the same course as mine, civil engineering student, now a civil engineer working in UAE. And I'm glad that this comment would inspire more people to follow such rulings or in other words don't defy the social norms and of course here's the safety tips in time of the new normal you know what in Paanyake City Integrated or Paanyake Integrated Terminal Exchange or should I say Papa Inja Tango X-Ray PITX still observe 1.5 meter distancing rule. It's not one not two, but 1.5 meter. And the corridor ways got into two-way undivided corridor way portion, wherein all commuters have to stay on the right side of the corridor. Same thing as follows for SM Dasmanias right before i'm very angry to anyone else not observing the supposedly one-way flow for the corridor way or the or should i say divided corridor way whereas if i could see someone walking on a wrong way that is about to have a higher risk of collision. I have to use the evasive or evasive man, evasive movement, which is very different for motor vehicles or aircrafts that requires an evasive maneuver to avoid the collision. But in this new normal corridor ways in SM Dasmanias, also in Robinson's Dasma, got into one way already so as to prevent head-on collision and to curb the spread of COVID-19 and other diseases and other forms of biological viruses that would harm one's health.
And so, with the right hand traffic, strictly implementing across the malls nationwide, in terms of corridor way, and even the sidewalk, you have to observe the right hand traffic rule. To summarize this one, there's some sort of technical issues that we have detected in this live podcast. Hopefully, there would be no impediments for this episode, but further, there would be some sort of issues. I'm going to notify you right away. But let's continue to this story that it needs to be well known to everybody else that I have to warn them like this way please if you could see me walking on the correct side of the corridor way and of course never block the corridor way for any reason in the previous blabbering true episode wherein there's some sort of blockage in one of the corridor which is close to the automated teller machines and I have to tell those security personnel right there to manage the queuing so as to prevent the blockage of the necessary corridor traffic, whether it's a wheelchair or a stroller or a push carts of any sort. Therefore, if you're going to make a queuing you have to strictly abide with those policies right there. Please check it out with your locality for more information on the queuing guidelines. And also, don't forget that queuing is of highest importance because as far as you know, physical distancing guidelines, such as when we're been telling to the elementary and high school years to do some sort of arms forward and arms sideward, of about 1.5 meters to be approximate way back on its flag racing ceremony of course the physical distancing could curb the spread of COVID-19 and other diseases that would harm one's health much better if you wear mask bring your own alcohol and do some sort of biosecurity procedures such as the footpaths, temperature scanning. And speaking of temperature scanning, 
you have to be at below 37.3 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, you have to be sent home or be sent to hospital if needed. Senior citizens, persons with disabilities, pregnant women are at higher risk. With the exception of persons with disabilities, they are not allowed to go out of houses. But for persons with disabilities, it's on case-to-case -case basis, whether if they are working or not. And I recommend all persons with disabilities to stick into work-from-home arrangements. Safety tips could be much better if you have listened or watched to some sort of TV and radio stations, especially for the guidelines concerning the general community quarantine and the modified general community quarantine. And so, since this is a live session, if you have any questions, don't forget to drop the comment right here on the screen. Or any shout outs that you could send it in here. We're going to have a short break, so please stay tuned.
Apologies for some sort of technical problems here. But as far as I'm concerned, the touchpad is not working properly. Hopefully, it would be normal as possible. But in the event that this touchpad is out of control, then I would want the postponement of the live episode. But hopefully, this live episode would be continued as usual. So, without further ado, let's go for the physical distancing. Okay. FM and most podcast providers and well thank you very much for watching Durpol in Focus live session and this is your Durpol speaking and of course we have a breaking news here feast at home has been posted recently by the Feast SM Dasmania's Facebook page. I'm trying to bring in it up all over the screen for you to read on. So please stand by. And right here, Feast at home and an extension of the feast since the pandemic disaster have struck everything that sent most was into at home through live streaming and even parish streamed parts of the or the entirety of the holy masses however sad for muslims right there that there's some sort of localized suspension of the worship service every friday and thankfully feast at home have come into or have arrived into the feast SM Dasmanias. Standing with the one Cavite district. And well, if you're well aware about it, Feast SM Dasmanias online session would start tomorrow at 1800 hours philippine standard time or 6 p.m philippine standard time and you know what don't forget to experience god's love through the feast wherever you are you are love wherever you are Feast at home, Cavite District, starting Sunday. And well, I'm going to pop it up on the second screen, so please stand by.
hopefully the whole full screen will be shown. And unfortunately, there are some sort of technical difficulties that were being experienced. Hopefully, the new normal will get unhampered. Trying to close safe all applications here. But don't you worry, on the condensed parts of the podcast, feeders will be removed in order to focus on the topic. But for live edition and the video on demand, it will remain assist. So, we're going to show it to you right hand screen. Fees at home have arrived already. And this fees at home will start anytime soon. For public service purposes, we will be airing some sort of reminders to keep if you are going to observe physical distancing and here comes the queuing somewhere else in Singapore's Bedok Interchange. I'll pop it up for you guys. And this is courtesy of Straits Times from Singapore. I'll pop it up on the screen. And by the way, you're still watching Durbo Live. And of course, I'm going to pop it up right here on the screen. Queuing at the Bedok Interchange, observing the physical distancing that is required. And yes, of course, there would be some sort of discrepancies on the meter or the distance guidelines this check it out with your local area for the latest physical distancing guidelines and please make sure that you have to queue it up properly like a pearl And so, while we're discussing those physical distancing, 
in South Korea. Let me say. In South Korea, queuing, or let me say, while taking the while taking something like, um, let me read this one in the full screen. Job applicants take a written examination on a football field during. A recruitment test for the city run. Ansan Urban Corporation in Ansan, which is south of Seoul, are going to enhance the crediting. Trans France Press and the Straits Times. Let me scroll it right here. As you can see, physical distancing is strictly observed right there with some sort of very far. Distancing that I have so right there based on the photographic sources. Course were running at around 50 minutes of the session. So we're going to have a break. So please stay tuned. All of our dear call 24 in focus live session after the break.
Okay, thank you very much for watching the Podin Focus live session on the queuing experiences. And we're now on the second part of the live session. And this is your Drupal speaking earlier if you have missed. Queuing experience have been shared. And also the physical distancing has been observed across the globe. Of course, if you need more information, kindly visit the official online portal COVID-19 government portal, which is at www.covid19.gov.ph. And also, if you're going to visit the World Health Organization, just visit the World Health Organization on this official online portal as shown. WHO.INT And of course, next program, Adulting with Joy Spring, Shot of Sanity Live at 2000 hours, 8 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. Don't forget to check it out, Mapping 101, live session every Thursday. Going back to the queuing experiences. As you can imagine this one, what would it be the world without the COVID-19 pandemic disaster that got occurred? There would be in most cases in the Philippines, no orderly manner of giving where we should be as we have taught way back from the elementary and high school years that we have to do some sort of arms forward, arms sideward into the 1.5 meter. I'll go into demonstrate it to you. This one is the arms forward. Please make sure that the tip of your finger does not touch the person in front of you. And this one, as you can see, apologies if there's something wrong with the screen hopefully there would be a wide angle camera lens but for this demonstration purposes this one is the arm side wide and please make sure that the tip of your finger does not touch to another person's finger And of course, let me say this to you. The arms forward, arms sideward could be of the defense. Again, apologies for some sort of internal issues here at your police. I have to execute the emergency muting. And of course, Drupal Live will 
have to continue with these stories that may be matter to all the people later. And going back to the arms forward, arms sideward thing. And of course, you have to avoid contact with another person if you're going to have a line formation. And say, if you're going to queue, you have to avoid contact, whether it's a physical one with one another. And for the buses, physical distancing has to be observed one seat apart with the exception for the, you know, DLTV companies reconfiguration prototype. It's one by one by one seating pattern. There's a shielding on each seat. And of course, there must have a seat belt for safety purposes. And if this new normal buses would be approved from the prototype, then say good to go. Instead of the, you know, actual half of the seating capacity in the new reconfiguration, seating could hold up to, you know, 33 persons plus one bus captain to make it 34. There would be a crew which would be adding to another one if it's equipped with a jumper seat. So the maximum rated capacity could be at 35 already. As part of the new normal procedures, aside from the queuing, you have to undergo decontamination procedure, also known as foot batting. And you have to use your own tap and pay card that were purchased from the train and bus stations. Electronic payments only will be the new norm. That means to say, no cash accepted anymore unless they would have a coin box provided. Therefore, the side effect for the queuing, if the 50% of the bus capacity could be a queuing congestion already. And that means to say that we should avoid it at all costs to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. And right here, physical distancing and queuing has to be at the right most lane so as 
not to block unnecessarily the corridor way. Well, there's an article that I'm going to show it to you in a moment with regards to the failure or refusal to observe physical distancing. And of course, I'll show it to you on the right side. Coming from COVID-19.gov.ph that would be pop up on the right side of your screen. Seventeenth of May twenty twenty. There's a problem already across the malls that physical distancing has been failed to observe. And of course, this has been led to provincial wide or province wide mall closure brought about by the provincial government's displeasure all over physical distancing violations that have incurred. And we're going to read the whole article as shown on the screen. Saying that, let's take it on the full screen. The Joint Task Force COVID Shield Commander Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliasar from 17th May 2020 warned that failure of the most security managers to implement safe physical distancing measures will result in the closure of the establishment. Social media reports and even television radio station reports have been surfaced all over or across the Philippines previously. And that means to say that the government is very serious on the physical distancing. And here's the reminder, as I have to acknowledge this one. Thank you for watching the Ball in Focus Live. Don't forget to hit those safety tips, especially on queuing on the new normal as shown earlier. And if we're going to analyze those, just as like I'm reporting for the newscast, as far as I'm concerned, queuing has to be strictly fo focused and or should I say strictly enforced rather so that the queuing will not lead into some sort of any issues that most of the people are experiencing right now. And of course, the only tip that you're going to 
be sure this is. If you're at the queuing for the supermarkets, grocery stores, convenience stores, fast food, and even restaurants on a take home basis, you have to observe one to two meter physical distancing. Of course, you have to wear masks, bring your own alcohol or sack or any sanitizing device that you have. And also, don't forget to observe 5S regularly. So, we're about to go for a break. So please stay tuned for the last 30 minutes before the next program as shown on the screen goes live. So please stand by.
Well, we're back. Next at 20:00 Philippine Standard Time is the Adulting with Joy Spring Shot of Sanity Live, entitled "The Idiot's Guide to Working from Home," with special guests, Coach Lika Maafilia, Mr. Victor Anastasio. And of course, you're tuning in to Dirkwood in Focus live session here. Dirkwood speaking here. And of course, we're going to discuss more of the modified lane assignment for the Highway 1 AH26 Fourth Circumferential Road, also known as Epifanio de los Santos Avenue. And I'll show it up to you on the right side of your screen. According to the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, buses would be at the leftmost lane, which is lane number one, while the general multi-purpose lanes could be from lanes Two to four, or two to five, or two to six, or in some cases, bus lanes could be a dual one, making it three, especially from Australia all the way to Bonnie Pioneer. And also, don't forget that you're not supposed to drive all over the bus lane. Violators could be apprehended already. And of course, buses could run much faster than before. And also, Commuter safety tips. You have to watch out anytime for your vulnerable belongings. Don't forget that you have another person with you, so don't forget to wear a mask at all times for your safety or health safety rather. And of course, observe physical distancing at all times just to curb the spread of COVID-19. If there would be an increased cases of COVID-19 in your locality, there would be localized lockdowns as declared by the local government. So, in that case of the localized lockdowns or localized enhanced community quarantine, you have to shelter in place immediately. And well, I have nothing to regret all over those safety measures that I have been practicing anytime, anywhere, particularly in the pre-COVID-19 pandemic disaster world, air and students are leaving their dashes anywhere which is unacceptable for most of the students who are strictly observing the cleanliness protocol. And of course, 
I was the only one to observe the 5S clean up after the last class by doing those things, from arranging those chairs and tables into proper position, and even cleaning up those mess that were created, and even shutting off the electrical equipment, and even the multimedia equipment like the high-definition television sets, and also, if there would be a needed assistance, I might have to wait for the maintenance crew to come and clean the rest of it, which is supposedly less than 10 minutes of cleaning time. However, due to the sheer size of trashes scattered everywhere, especially the classroom, so deciding to see that I was the one to clean this classroom. And I have to warn those environmental violators to stop smoking in the public areas and while waiting for the buses to come on time especially the commuter rusher I have tend to be like strictly observing the physical distancing and even so I have to warn those commuters not to go by on the sidewalk which is considered a dangerous one also a jaywalking violations or jaywalking violation also And if there's no choice for the commuting rusher, I have to relocate elsewhere for the bus. Maybe Sunday next topic for Dear God in Focus podcast. And I'm going to show it to you the next episode that would be pop up on the screen. But before the next episode, the transit mapping still con still continues on the further episodes of Mapping 101 live session every Thursday. I'm going to show it to you the transit map but while waiting for the transit map to be pop out stay for if you're going elsewhere from Tasmania city to somewhere else in Metro Manila I would rather recommend you to take the city bus route 28 and 29. And don't forget to change upon arrival in the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange. Such ra route rationalization could mean lesser delays for most buses and commuters, increasing the capacity for, you know, commuting times. 
And if ever the mass rapid transit lines would begin working properly, such as those of line 3 and line 2, that are still technically under rehabilitation, the original railway setting, especially for the speed to be restored at 60 kilometers per hour. And for line two to get restored into full blast from Cubao or Araneta Cubao interchange all the way to Santolan and extending into Masinag Iswart. So as to further decongest the commuter traffic. Apart from that, the rationalized bus transit map will be shown on the right side of your screen. So please stand by. I'll give you the idea on the bus routes. And there you go. I'll turn it off the ticker below. And if in case you're wondering on what the live streaming software I'm using, it's the StreamYard. And it's still running under test broadcast. So please be patient. Dear Paul. Digital TV still under test broadcast. Let me zoom it in into 20 level. For the Kubau, Araneta Kubau interchange to be exact, there are some sort of interchanges that you need to observe. Especially the bus lines Echo 8, 9, and 10. Kubau, Araneta Kubau Interchange could serve as a provincial bus terminal, especially the Araneta City's passport and bus terminal that serves many provincial buses. But of course, due to the restriction against provincial buses, it's temporarily closed. And there's interchange also in Katipunan, you have to change it into lines 8 and or 9 in order to get you into the correct destination. North Edsa Interchange. Echo 19 and 4. Badintawak Bagong Barrio Interchange. Echo 3, 20, 21, and 22. Please memorize those bus route numbers. Especially if you're going to commute so often for monumental interchange echo one two three 
17, 20, 21, and 22. Also with the line one. And the fifth avenue, you have to change it all over lines, bus lines two and 17 and four. Light railway transit line one. Doroteo Jose, same thing here. It is it's now officially an interchange. Also with the lotto. Also with the Buendia Hill Boyat Interchange. Lines 13, 17, and 6. And if you're heading to Makati City, there's some sort of modification already. You have to take lines Echo 16, 14, and 15 if you're heading to Ayala. For Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange, Echo 2, 18, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Also, for Sukat Interchange, lines 23, 14, and 25. And as you can see, the future Tagig Integrated Terminal Exchange will be situated all over FDI, Faxtra Tango, India. Only line 16 will terminate there. And as you can observe here, for Alabang, lines 15 or 14, 15, 24, and 25. Cavite Laguna, starting from line 15 for Binyan City. And for Cavite, lines 26 to 30. For Naik, Tresemartes City, Tasmania City, Palapala, General Mariano Alvarez, and Cavite City, respectively. And as such, hopefully there would be no conflicts among the provincial buses. And I would rather recommend to all provincial bus operators to switch into point-to-point -point bus operation. Which could be more comfortable, more accessible, safer, and secured ride to your destination. 
here's the drawback for point-to-point -point bus operation. It would be quite more expensive than usual city buses. And so many of those commuters are wondering on why there would be some sort of fare adjustment. And of course, if you're at the city level buses or city bus operation, you have to take note of the first structure that I'm going to flash it on the screen. And as such, a minimum fare for first five kilometer is at 13 pesos. And of course, calculations for the air conditioned bus unit for the succeeding kilometer rate. I'm going to flash it after I have typed or eaten it. Let me say, 13 plus 2.2x for those who are using this formula based. 13 pesos stands for first 5 kilometers and then 2.20x would mean 2.20 pesos per succeeding kilometer. Let me calculate this one. If you're going to, say, head into another town, you might cost something like 17 minus 5 is 13. Nope, it's 12 rather, then you could cost more than what you think. It's 39.4 peso for regular commuter. And if there would be 20% discount then it would be reduced into 31.52 let me change the value if it's 20 kilometers 20 kilometers, 36.8 for student, and 46 for regular. Not necessarily student fare, but also for senior citizens and persons with disabilities. And so, that concludes
Dear Paul, three for in focus live session. Don't forget to join me, dear Paul, tomorrow, or should I say, next week at 1800 hours Philippine Standard Time. And of course, Adulting with Joyce Spring, Shot of Sanity live session is up next. So please stay tuned. And also, don't forget that God is so good all the time. Tune in tomorrow for the live stream session of the Feast. Once again, Afis SM Das Marinas, in your session rather, or should I say, online premiere, should happen at same time as this programming. So, without further ado, let's have another Dear Paul in Focus podcast topic to be discussed for about two hours, and it will be cut into two parts for the condensed version of the podcast and so the next programming would be Please stand by if I have to open those thumbnails and there you go. Next episode would be more of random stories. Behind the top and pay logic on the first star. And also previously met servants on the second hour. Say heart to heart experience once again. So please make sure to listen to these random stories. And that concludes the Dirtball in Focus live session. And see you next week. God bless us all. And don't forget that you are loved always, wherever you are. That's the new branding for Feast at Home.